Hey, what's up everybody? So today I'm going to be showing you my interactive brokers account uh, just because I am going to be talking about a strategy that I am uh, I've been, I have been doing that is uh, pretty interesting. I think it's very unique in that uh, I don't know if there's a lot of people doing it. Okay, so uh, but the reason why interactive brokers is such an important element in this trait in this strategy is because of uh you know two things of number one margin number two uh this this thing called sma okay so basically it just means you know how much money you can actually take out right now on your debit card okay and that's important because whenever you're you're trading whenever you're doing stocks it's always important to to really know where you are financially and how much you have uh, basically cash on hand in case of emergencies or uh, just really for various reasons right if you if there are stocks that are down that you can be purchasing uh, there's just a wide variety of reasons to to be able to access your cash well, without necessarily having to sell right so because if you happen to run into an emergency and you have to sell your your stocks and you know that those stocks are down at that time, it's just not really a good uh, strategy to have because you're you're going to be forced to sell at a low low cost. Okay, so uh, interactive brokers, you know, just just to give you a preface, is 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 really quite complex. Uh, they they probably have a lot more features that you don't need, and that I personally don't think is necessary, um, but. Nonetheless, you know, interactive brokers, the reason why I use interactive brokers is because, again, because their margin rate is really low, you know, like one point something percent. Uh, on top of that, the SMA, which means that if you needed to access cash, uh, even that rate is extremely low. And I'll talk about that more a little later. Okay, so uh, and and so if if you're able to access cash through your investments, right, if you're able to borrow off of your your uh, equities and whatever investments you make it just really opens up in my opinion a lot more opportunities because you're not tied up to those investments and especially if you're doing like vertical uh, spreads right if you're doing vertical or even diagonal spreads um, you're able to really just uh, be more confident about having collateral stuck for a little longer uh, because you know you're able to access that <clears throat> that cash if needed okay so uh and then the 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 trade i'm going to be talking about today um i am actually going to be be using robin hood okay yeah like so robin hood is still a lot more cleaner to use than interactive brokers so i usually typically just use robin hood to identify the trades that i'm going to be doing and then I'll go into interactive brokers to execute the trade. Now, one thing to know about vertical spreads is you do need to access their trader workstation, uh, and, and that can only be accessed through a desktop. So I'm actually uh, showing you my account on an, an iPad. So, okay, so <clears throat> before I begin, I want to preface that I'm not a financial advisor, and this is just simply a strategy that is really interesting that I uh, learned about recently and uh, I think it is pretty un unorthodox so make sure you do your own research and uh, make sure you also just give me a like and subscribe if I uh, help you make some money and without further ado okay so this is basically uh, just simply a real basic option uh, if you don't know what options are I would highly recommend you do some research on options um, so this is not for uh, the typical beginner but uh, it's also not a very complex trade, okay? So it's uh, simply a bull put credit spread. So essentially you're buying a put and then you're selling a put at a, at a uh, higher strike price, okay? So you're essentially collecting a premium uh, whenever you sell this credit spread, okay? So I wanna show you what it looks like. And then I wanna show you also uh, the expiration, which is going to be really, really important. Okay, so um, the expiration I'm using on these spreads are far out of 
uh, just far out. Okay, so meaning that uh, you know twenty twenty four. So uh, almost two years from now, uh, right? Two years. Uh, these these spreads are gonna you know uh, go out two years. And the reason why, and and I'll explain to you more a little bit later, is because you really you know uh, you really collect the maximum amount of premium on the amount of collateral that you are putting up. Okay, so let me explain what that means. So every time you open up a put credit spread, you you are forced to have collateral in, uh, for if the spread doesn't go the way you want it to go. Okay, so so let's say you, you open up a trade on Tesla. Okay, so we're gonna just go right into it. Um, so we're gonna open up this trade on Tesla and uh, this is probably going to be uploaded a little after um, the fact that, you know, I recorded this on a Wednesday. Um, but uh, you can really essentially do this trade for, you know, different stock companies and, uh, you know, using different stock tickers and all that. This is really just to show you uh, what the, how the trade is set up and what it would look like. Okay, so I'm looking at Tesla right now and I looked at... Uh, buying a put at 650 and then selling a put at 660 okay and this is set to expire January 19th 2024 okay so what's what's really interesting about this trade is is you find these deals where and I just want to show you that there is volume so these are the actual trades that you can execute there's not a lot but uh, nonetheless there are volume so that, that that means that you are able to execute these trades so basically what this means is if I open up this contract, I am actually collecting $870 uh, on a collateral of $1,000. So meaning that I put up $1,000, but I collect $870, which almost doubles my money, right? And, okay, so let me show you this. Okay, so if I open up this trade right now, uh, I, would, I, would, I would collect a premium of $870. Okay, let me show you also what the trade looks like. Okay, so this trade, okay, so between now and January 20, uh, 2024, uh, if the shock trades above uh, 660, okay, so meaning that the stock would have to drop 14.5% before I start to lose money. Actually, I would say actually it's 15.63% before I start to lose money. Um, yeah, anything after that, I essentially get to keep my profit. So let's say on January nineteenth, twenty twenty four, uh, you know the the stock is, you know, down, you know, five percent, six percent. I still collect the entire eight hundred eight hundred seventy dollars. Uh, if the stock goes up, which you know I'm bullish on Tesla, then you also collect the eight hundred seventy dollars. Okay, the only way I would lose money is if the stock goes uh, under. Over by over 16%. And this is in two years, right? And I'm pretty sure Tesla by then, uh, in my opinion, is going to be up higher than what it is now, okay? And then the, the best thing, though, about this trade is look at the max loss. So let's say, you know, Tesla does, for some, some reason, Elon, Elon Musk just makes screws up really, really bad. Stock goes down and, you know, we just, uh, you know, we lose all hope in Tesla. The max loss on this tr particular trade is $130. So that means I am putting up $1,000 with, with the possibility of gaining $870 and then with the risk of losing $130. To me, that risk is not significant enough uh, in relation to the gain, if that kind of makes sense. In other words, you know, if I'm going to make $870, uh, I'm more than happy to risk $130 to make that profit. Okay, so one big thing I, I want to just kind of point point us to now is the fact that a lot of me, a lot of you may immediately ask the question. Well, you know that means I have to sit on this trade until January nineteenth, twenty twenty four. And what if I need to sell? What if you know there's 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 a whole lot of different reasons how why someone might need to sell. But you know the the question of liquidity comes in mind, right? What if you do need to sell? Um, you know, you're, you lose the opportunity cost of a thousand dollars and all that. And I think that's, that's, that's a really, really valid question, right? Most of the time 
the reason why I don't like to open up uh, put credit spreads too far out is because you're losing out on the opportunity cost of investing that money elsewhere. But if you pay attention to this, okay, so look at this. If you open up this trade uh, on a particular uh, brokerage account, and I'm going to link that brokerage account uh, down uh, in the link in my de details information below. But if you take a look at this, uh, it's called interactivebrokers.com. Interactive Brokers is recently uh, a platform I moved my entire trading account to. Um, so I, I mainly trade on interactive brokers. It's, it's a little complex at first. It does take a little bit of, uh, you know, figuring out how to, how to work it. But what I love about interactive brokers is the fact that, you know, let's say you open up this, this trade, you have, uh, $1,800 in book value, uh, in your account. Uh, what's really interesting about interactive brokers is you can open up a debit, debit card and, uh, you can, actually borrow uh, using the, the amount of money inside that you're invested in. Okay, so let's say you are invested $1,800 in the Tesla and you know, there's a rainy day that you need to pull some money out, all right? Y yes, you're gonna pay a little bit of interest that's really, really low, like one point something percent, but you have that option in case you do need to uh, free up more cash uh, you know, to for whatever purposes. And then, of course, uh, with put credit spreads, uh, you can always close them out early. Okay, so let's say, you know, you just, you're just done with Tesla, you don't want to, uh, you know, count on them going up or, you know, just you, you just want to close the trade. That's definitely another option. But for me, you know, like just keeping the option open with the fact that, you know, it may go up, uh, it may, you know, things may change. Uh, and the fact that you collect eight hundred dollars premium, of eight hundred seventy dollars premium up front, risking one hundred thirty dollars, that is to me an insane amount of premium, uh, for the amount of risk that you're putting up. Okay, so uh, let me take a let me show you another trade. Okay, so this this doesn't this this works with other uh, blue chip companies like Alibaba. Okay, so I am bullish Alibaba. Uh, you know Alibaba has been really wrecked in the last couple months. Uh, or really in the last year, but uh, I do think, you know, just with the amount of cash you're generating, there's going to be a lot of potential for them or a stock to go back up. Okay, we're doing the same trade. We're buying a put, uh, and then I'm going to set my expiration date first to January 19, 2024. Um, so let's take a look at this trade. Okay, so if I buy a put at 115 and I sell a put at $26 right here, Okay, look at this. The max profit I can make is four hundred dollars. The max loss is a hundred dollars. And in order for me for the stock to, uh, for me to lose money, start losing money on this trade, Alibaba will have to go down by another seventeen percent, right? So in between now and January twenty twenty four, if the stock moves, you know, anything above seventeen percent, I collect the entire premium. And if it does go, for some reason, go below 70%, I lose $100. In the meantime, that $400 I collected up front on premium, I can use it on interactivebrokers.com because of their, their debit card system where they, they allow you to, to borrow money using your uh, portfolio. All right. So let's say you, know, you open up some trades. I'm going to show you how it works. You open up some trades. You have long stock value of about... Uh, I don't know, like ten thousand dollars, or even uh, let's just say a hundred thousand dollars. Let's say you know, for those who have a little more invested, you can borrow seventy five thousand dollars, and I think the interest rate is like one point something percent. You can use that for whatever purposes. You you can use it for a house, a mortgage, rent. Uh, you can even use it to buy more stocks, and I think that's a really amazing deal if you consider the amount of risk uh, that you're risking on these credit spreads. Okay. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it below. Make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time.